Hi everybody! Welcome to this series of tutorials where I will teach you how to leverage Revit API to create your own custom tools and automate boring and repetitive tasks. In the next videos I will show you how to set up your development environment, create your first extension with PyRevit and how to get started creating your very own tools for Autodesk Revit. It's good to have some experience with any programming language such as Python or c or visual programming like Dynamo or Grasshopper. Let me know if you're an absolute beginner and you want to learn Python basics as well. I'll try to create a series of tutorials on that. This is an introduction video where I want to explain what is Revit API, what are the benefits of it, how can we use it, and how fast can you get the skills to create your own tools. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, what is Revit API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. In simpler terms, an API is a documented set of instructions written by a developer of an application to share pieces of functionality of their software. It's made to give other developers an easy and started way of building on top of an application without the need to write our own code from scratch. So to create our own add-in for Revit, we need our code to communicate with Revit application. And that's where Revit API comes into play. Revit would not be as good as it is if there weren't so many custom add-ins, both paid and free. So it's important that developers give access to their software. For example, every time you create a wall in Revit, you activate your wall tool, then you choose two points, and you have your wall with default set of parameters. But we can have a look in what's going on behind graphical interface. This is RevitAPIDocs.com. It's a website developed by Gui Talagico, and it helps us access Revit API functionality in an easier way. Let's find a wall class. It's a blueprint for all our walls in Revit. And let's look at create methods. There are multiple create functions, but they all have different inputs. For example, this will only take a set of lines, while other methods also require you to provide element ID of base and top levels. So in theory, we can create an algorithm to define a set of lines that will be given to this function to create multiple walls. Now we know what Revit API is. Let's talk about its benefits. We can create any kind of tool we want, as long as Revit API can provide us with access to certain functions that we need. We can use it for automation. Let's imagine you want to back up 10 of your projects on a weekly basis and you also want to take some schedules and export them to Excel to create an updated version of your room data. And on top of that, export the latest plans and write in some log file to keep track of all your backups. Or we can improve our workflows, like updating opening heights for tagging, create hundreds of sheets with specific views on them, or for example, I have created a few specific tools for my workflows with revisions in Revit. You can check the video on my channel, it will be linked in the top right corner if you're interested. Then we can do some advanced modeling and multiple elements placements, like facade paneling. But Grasshopper or even Dynamo can be better for this case because of instant visual output and simplified interface. We can standardize our projects, make naming of your walls, floors and roofs automated based on their parameters. And in general, you can create any kind of tools and combine them in your own extensions, like my free extension EF Tools. Now let's talk about how can we use Revit API. Revit API is used with programming languages that support .NET libraries such as c and R and Python. I'm creating this series to teach you how to create tools with Python specifically. We will use PyRevit because it will simplify the whole process of creating your extension and buttons and the best part that you can update your scripts dynamically without the need to restart your PyRevit. This is not the case with c -sharp. I'm not going to compare programming languages with each other or benefits to both of them, but I'm all for Python and you will see why in the next video. However, in case you choose to go with Python, it will be very helpful to learn how to convert c -sharp code into Python code quickly. Most of the little snippets you're gonna find online about your issue will be found in c -sharp, and it's not hard to translate them. It just has different syntax, but all of the Revit API elements are called the same. I'll create a video trying to show you how easy it is. You can use Python and Revit API in PyRevit or Dynamo. I'll focus mainly on PyRevit route, because that's how I develop all of my tools nowadays. But you can transfer your skills between the two without an issue. So how long will it take to start making your own tools? I think realistically you can get the skills you need to create your own tools on your own within half a year if you put enough hours into it. Depends on how quickly you can grasp programming concepts, hopefully I can help you on your journey of learning new skills. I'll be starting my monthly Revit API challenges once I reach my goal on Patreon. I'll be giving a task for a simple tool and then I will make a video showing you how I would personally make such a tool with comments on your most frequently asked questions. Let me tell you a little bit of my story. I started learning Python around 3 or 4 years ago in the evenings, and by now I'm very confident in my programming skills. My journey started by learning Dynamo Basics, and later on I got a chance to work on Parametric Facade. Our goal was to minimize typology and make it look more interesting. 
It was also the first time I tried writing with Python, because I wanted to combine simple nodes together of an algorithm I created for placing panels between line intersections. At the time, I didn't even know how to use for loops, and I was making everything with while loop and counting iteration to make it break at the right moment. Then I started making more and more dynamo scripts to automate different tasks, but I hated that sometimes I had to spend a lot of time making it work on another computer, due to package management and other issues. Then a colleague of mine, Jakob Steiner, has showed me PyRevit and said that I will appreciate what it can do for me. I was skeptical for a while, but then I started making my tools in pure Python and I loved it. I saw potential to create my own library of snippets and reuse a lot of my code to make my code faster and more efficient. I started rewriting a lot of my Dynamo scripts to PyRevit and slowly I switched completely. All I'm saying is that all of you can go very far with programming if you stay on track and keep improving. Thank you for watching this video. The next one I will show you all of the tools you need to install if you want to create your own add-ins in Revit with Python. If you enjoy my content and want to get even more, support my channel and development of my free extension EF tools on my Patreon page. My name is Eric Fritz and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.